And now it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Mike Vincent. Hello, Michael Vincent here, and today I want to talk to you about my second video series I'll be doing for the Dice Tower. Now, my first video was an educational review of Pandemic, uh, as the first series of videos I'll be doing is taking a look at educational games. Um, not necessarily intended to be educational, but board games that I think could be used by a teacher in a classroom or by a parent to help their student be more engaged in the unit they're doing in school. However, my second video series is going to be something completely different. Now, before I tell you what that is, I'd like you to take a look at all these games here. Now, take 30 seconds or so, I'll highlight each game and try and figure out what it is these games have in common. So if you guessed cooperative games, you'd be correct. I'm a big fan of cooperative games, but no, my channel is not taking a look at cooperative games. Instead, it's taking, taking a look at what, in my opinion, is the best cooperative game, or certainly my favorite cooperative game. And I'd like to highlight this is simply my opinion. Um, I'm sure many of you will disagree, but I think that there's one co-op to rule them all. That's right folks, my favorite cooperative game is The Lord of the Rings, The Living Card Game by Fantasy Flight Games. Um, so I've noticed after watching the Dice Tower for a few years that one area that's perhaps a bit underrepresented, at least on the YouTube channel, is LCGs or Living Card Games. So my second video series for the Dice Tower is going to be taking a very in-depth look at this game, The Lord of the Rings, The Card Game. Now this game is cooperative and it's one I've been playing for years now. Um, it's a game I keep coming back to, and it's a game I find that gets better and better as time goes on. Like a lot of cooperative games, they tend to be really exciting at the beginning, but then once you figure them out, um, they lose a bit of their luster as time goes on. However, I find with a living card game model, that as more and more cards come out, Lord of the Rings, the living card game just becomes more in-depth and more exciting as time goes on. So I'm going to start by taking a look at the player cards for the Lord of the Rings, the card game, in chronological order. So my next few videos are going to be taking a look at the Lord of the Rings card game, the core set, and going through the four different spheres of influence. So I'll be looking at tactics, spirit, lore, and leadership. So my first video is going to be a breakdown of the tactics cards um, for the Lord of the Rings, the core set. And then I'm going to go through in chronological order of all the adventure packs and expansions that have been released and get up to date. Now eventually I will take a look at the um, encounter decks as well. But I think for getting people into the game, it's good to save some stuff and not have any spoilers. So the player cards will give you an idea of what cards come in each pack, but it won't spoil the quests. You won't know what enemies, what encounters, um, so that you will still have something to look forward to if you decide to jump in and play the Lord of the Rings, the living card game. So I'm really excited to be taking a look at the Lord of the Rings living card game over the next few months. Um, and I hope that it's a game that if you haven't played yet, you'll perhaps consider um, after you watch some of these videos. Um, I would like to keep in mind, or like you to keep in mind, that these videos are meant for probably beginner and intermediate players. If you are a hardcore Lord of the Rings living card game player, you play it every weekend, you have all your different decks, you have every encounter set, every adventure pack, then perhaps these videos will not give you as much as it would to a beginner player. Um, I'm certainly going to try and give you all of my best advice. Um, when it comes to deck building, how different cards have advantages and disadvantages, and which cards I personally like. Um, so if you're new to the game or you've only played a little bit, hopefully I can give you some advice in terms of which adventure packs you might be interested in picking up, and perhaps let you think about cards and players, um, and to use cards differently than you might have considered in the first place, and some tips for deck building as well. So thanks very much. Once again, I'm going to be starting by just looking at the core set and then chronologically going through all the adventure packs and expansions um, in chronological order. So stay tuned for a look at tactics, leadership, spirit, and lore from the core set. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to making more videos soon. Have a great week. 
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>